Sailing past wild landscapes teeming with ancient history, small towns scraping an existence out of the steep stone mountains, and a resilient people with a ferocious past. This week, our plan is to sail to one of the most isolated and untamed regions of Greece to tap into its violent past. Okay, things are definitely getting a little creepy now. But before we can do any of that, we've got a serious engine issue that we need to deal with. Man, I just destroyed this hose. And while escaping the trappings of civilizations has its benefits, the ability to easily source engine parts is not one of them. Now, last week, we were able to put in an order for the part that we need. I'm looking for a 25 millimeter hot water hose. I think. No, uh, water, hot water. Then we've got to do some engine surgery before where we can head out to sea in search of one of Greece's most beautiful and treacherous regions. So I'm in town, taking the trash out, walking Oso, and oh my God, I can smell like croissants and coffee. It smells so good. <laughs> All right, check this out. This is my homemade croissant. Oh yeah, baby. That's definitely one thing I like about Europe is bakeries like that. Get a croissant, get a coffee. All of it's really high quality. I feel like that's very common. In the States, it's not as common to find, you know? So you can probably notice that it's real like smoky today. The sky is very unclear. That's because there's some pretty gnarly wildfires going all over Greece right now. Way up in the north, some of the islands, as well as down here in the Peloponnese. Hoping that it doesn't affect anywhere that we're going, that it doesn't make its way all the way over here. But uh, yeah, you never know. It's been a very hot year this year. There's been a lot of wildfires, so you're gonna have to deal with some smoke today. Got a surprise for you. So we decided to give Sugar a break for a month before we go to the States for Issa's medical stuff. So we can't have sugary treats, so I got you non-sugary treats. Oh, thank you. Is my plates taken out of them already? Well, there's one and a half, so I got three total. Thank you, baby. Mm -hmm. Did you have a good walk, Oso? Yes, you did. All right, so I got a call from our buddy at the friendliest marine supply store that I've ever been to, and our hose came in. So that's great news. Now we just gotta cross our fingers that it's the right hose, because there was a lot of rough translations going on when we ordered it, so we'll see. Good morning. <laughs> Half meter. Yeah, I think that is exactly what we're looking for. It's good. It's good, man. Yeah, yeah thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so thank much. You. Bye bye. Help. Thank you. See you again the next. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank so you. this comes from your farm. Yeah. 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 Okay. Drink. Drink all you. Okay. Yeah, drink the all. Big. Big. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Yeah. Holy sh! The stars aligned and I think we got the right hose. I'm very pumped about that. Also, how amazing is that that the dude like runs a marine store in the summer and then has an olive farm in the winter. That's so Greek, dude. <laughs> you know what I mean? So this here is the leaking hose. And in order to replace it, I first need to remove the pipe assembly that the hose connects to so that I have enough space to remove the old hose and connect the new one. This is a second bolt that I'm trying to get off and it's frozen, too awkward to get to really. Okay, all right, I'll remove the air intake so I can get a little bit better angle on it. Ugh, God, man. I can't get at it from a very good angle. Hey bud, can you do me a big favor and get my PB blaster? Thank. God, goes to show you, whenever I'm struggling with a fastener, I need to just stop, spray it with PB Blaster, period. All right, well, this piece here is turning out to be a bit too difficult to remove. Like it's, it's giant 
bolts that are gonna require a lot of torque and I just can't get that kind of leverage given the space here. But then I realized that the other side of the hose is connected to a pipe that might have just enough play to allow me to replace the problematic hose without having to remove that big pipe assembly. All right, baby, time for us to get lucky. Go quietly. Oh God. Man, I just destroyed this hose without even really trying. Makes me think that there's a good chance that this was the problem. Man, every aspect of this project is failing because this hose clamp is super rusted. So I'm just having a hell of a time getting it loose. Here we go, starting to get there. All right, hose is off. Okay, holy shit. Next, it was time to cut the new hose to length and hope that the old hose was the source of the leak. The only real way to find out is to put the new hose on and cross our fingers. Oh, that's very good. It's going on very nicely. Wow, that was very easy. Wow. <laughs> Second half of that project was very, very quick. <laughs> so now I'm just gonna clean up all this salt so that when we test it, it'll just be very obvious, like if it's still leaking or not. I think we're ready to test this thing. It's always a stressful moment because I'm hoping, I'm like, is there anything I forgot? Like, is something open? Is this thing just gonna blow up? Let's start her up, see how we did. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's not starting. Something got disconnected. I had a feeling that that happened. Okay, I think I figured it out. It's like a loose connection at the uh, start motor. Cross your fingers. It's alive! First, we check the exhaust, make sure there's water coming out. Okay, yeah, we're good there. All right, let's see if we can find any leaks. Okay, success. There was absolutely no water, zero leaking. That's a huge relief. So that project, as absurdly difficult as it was, is over. And it's a good thing too, because we are really running out of time to be here in the Peloponnese. We've got to start making our way around so that we can make our travel dates back to the States. As a quick reminder, Isabella was born with FACES syndrome, and we've been on a long medical journey trying to fully assess her condition. The next big step in this journey will be to go in person to Boston Children's Hospital to have some of the top experts in the world look over her case. So long story short, we are going to be getting underway tomorrow. So you could probably tell that lately I've been feeling very relaxed and just at peace here in the Southern Peloponnese. But what's kind of crazy is just a couple of weeks ago, I was experiencing a huge amount of anxiety. A lot of it was because we were just surrounded by tons of boaters that were doing lots of reckless stuff around us. But now in hindsight, as I look back at that experience, I think a lot of the problem was the fact that all those people around us appeared to be having the time of their lives. And a big part of me felt like I should be having that experience as well. And I think because of that, I forced myself to stay in situations in which I just felt downright uncomfortable. And so I think that internal struggle of wanting to stay and yet also wanting to leave sort of manifested itself to me in like constant, really intense anxiety. Now, luckily for me, that problem had an extremely simple solution. We left that extremely crowded part of Greece, came down here to the Southern Peloponnese where there's way fewer boats and it's just way more my style. But I'm also aware of the fact that at some point in my life, I'm gonna have to deal with problems that don't have such simple solutions. And when that happens, I'm gonna have to learn how to manage my anxiety way better than I have. Which brings me to the spot of today's video, BetterHelp. BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist who is trained to listen 
and give you helpful, unbiased advice. Starting therapy is hard, and the right therapist for you may not be in your area. And some people find the face-to-face -face interaction of therapy uncomfortable. With BetterHelp, you can have your therapy sessions via phone call, video chat, or even over messaging. Whatever is the most comfortable version of therapy for you. BetterHelp can match you to one of over 30,000 therapists in their network, which gives you access to a wider range of expertise than you would otherwise have access to in your area. To get started, you'll fill out a questionnaire to help assess your specific needs. And then you'll get matched with your therapist in most cases within 48 hours or less. And you'll be able to schedule therapy sessions at a time that's convenient for you. If the therapist that you're first matched with doesn't feel like a good fit, which can be a common experience when starting therapy, you can easily switch to a new therapist at no additional cost without having to worry about insurance or who's in your network or anything like that. People spend hours at the gym every Every week, so why not give your mind the same kind of attention? Over 4 million people have used BetterHelp to start living a healthier, happier life. If you think you might benefit from therapy, then consider BetterHelp. Click the link in the description below or visit betterhelp.com slash Atticus. Clicking that link helps support our channel, and it also gets you 10% off your first month of BetterHelp, so you can connect with a therapist and see if it helps you. Sailing by old stone structures in the early morning sun is something that I can't imagine would ever get old. This is the new castle of Pylos and has changed hands a lot since it was first built by the Ottomans over 400 years ago. From Ottoman to Venetian, back to Ottoman, and then Greek control in the 19th century, this beautiful fortress is a testament to just how complex and violent the history of the Mediterranean is once you really start to dive into it. What do you think of the Peloponnese so far? Yeah, I love it so far. I think it's my favorite part of the Med so far, you know? And the little towns, you can tell not as many tourists get there, so they're actually thriving communities where people live there year round. Yeah, it just has a really inviting feel to it. Yeah, I agree. It, it is interesting when you go, like in the Ionian Islands, those towns have formed into a thing that caters to international tourists uh -huh. and they know what the tourists want right so then they push that so like the restaurant that we went to in Costos uh -huh. a lot of it is like okay what do British tourists want what do German tourists want right and then they made that yeah it's not like that's what the restaurant was like in Costos before tourism you yeah. know Whereas Pilos, the town we were just in, those restaurants are kind of like what they would be mm -hmm. with or without tourism. It is a weird thing. Tourism is like a snake that eats its own tail, you yeah. know? Yeah. It's like there's something genuinely unique and interesting about a place. So then foreigners want to see and experience that uniqueness. And then the people in that unique place acknowledge that they can make a better living catering to those foreigners. Mm -hmm. So then they figure out what those foreigners want to see, yeah. and then they create that, yeah. and it's not even the thing that was there originally. Right. So well, it, it is, it's just, it's amplified. It's amplified, added on, manipulated, yeah. it's everything. So it's like, it's like a whisper of its original self, you know? Yeah. Quiet. Oh yeah, that's that's a lot nicer. <laughs> Look at her. Hold on to the main sheet. Yeah. Isa, <laughs> take up on the main. <laughs> Is that funny? <laughs> Alright. Oh, that looks good, buddy. Yeah. Got some Greek rice pilaf, grilled chicken, and boiled veggies. Delicious, thank you. Mmm. Oh, that's good. So I was doing some research, reading all the Jimmy Cornell books, mm -hmm. you know, thinking about crossing the Atlantic, not this winter, but next winter. Basically arrive in the Eastern Caribbean and then take 
about two months to get from the Panama Canal to the Sea of Cortez. Sail from La Paz to Hawaii and then sail from Hawaii to Alaska. Mm -hmm. But we can take the inside passage all the way down to like Seattle. And then we can keep going down the west coast mm -hmm. and try to get back to the Sea of Cortez. Mm -hmm. And then from there, go to the South Pacific basically. Mm -hmm. So it's like this really neat opportunity to have this like epic multi-year mm -hmm. detour, you know? Another fortress that was heavily contested by the Ottomans and Venetians, Methoni Castle, as it appears today, was built by the Venetians in the 13th century. But with its strategically important location at the southernmost point of the Messinian Peninsula, there have been fortifications of one kind or another here for thousands of years, with Methoni being mentioned by Homer in the Odyssey. Look at these huge, barren, desolate mountains that we're passing. It's fun cruising along a coastline like this. It's just like watching a movie with just like epic scenery passing by. We have definitely left the land of trees. <laughs> like I don't think there's any trees anywhere here. And it's crazy to think that this epic looking coastline used to be a very important part of the Mediterranean. I mean, a lot of the trade, a lot of the commerce, a lot of the civilization in this part of the world was on the Mani Peninsula. The Mani Peninsula is one of the harshest, most isolated terrains in all of Greece. Throughout much of history, the people of Mani, also called the Maniots, were semi-autonomous, managing to resist various invaders over the centuries, including the Slavs, Arabs, and even the Ottomans. So while the rest of Greece fell under Ottoman occupation for about 400 years, the Maniots fought fiercely to successfully preserve their independence. I'm sure the rugged terrain played a factor in why this area was so difficult to conquer, but one thing is for certain, the Maniots are not a group you'd wanna mess with. All right, well, we just rounded the southern tip of the Mani Peninsula and it is finally getting a little breezy. We've got 17 knots of wind coming down off of these mountains here, and we're only about 30 minutes away from the anchorage, so this is a really nice way to end the day. Got another gust coming up here in a second. Super pretty. Peloponnese, yes. Buddy, that's a rough one. <laughs> this is a very pretty spot. Yeah. And it was a nice breeze. Gosh. Lots of room. Uh huh. What you think, Bozo? You loving the Peloponnese? Peloponnese, yes. <laughs> hey, you stinker. <laughs> I'm gonna get you. <laughs> All right, buddy, what's the plan today? All right, today our plan is to try to scale up to that tower in the distance. We're not totally sure if there are access roads to it or if we're gonna be bushwhacking, but that's the goal. Baby, if you're ready, give me the okay symbol. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> The tower that we're going to attempt to hike to is one of the iconic tower houses of Mani. Mani's rugged terrain and relative isolation from the rest of Greece made centralized governance difficult, leading to powerful local families taking leadership roles in the absence of central rule. This autonomy combined with limited resources often sparked conflicts, creating a deep-seated vendetta culture where revenge killings were a normal part of life. This caused cycles of violence that could last for generations. Tower houses emerged in this landscape, serving as both protective fortresses and as symbols of family prestige, with taller towers showcasing the family's dominance in the region. Good boy, good 
Oh, so Oso jumped in. Good he's soaking boy. wet. I don't want him getting in here, so he's following us to the beach now. Good boy, Oso. Give me my little munchkin. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is like a cemetery. Well, I mean, it's totally in the middle of nowhere, but this would be such a cool place to be memorialized, you know? Yeah. Just on the top of this hill, mountains all around. You can really tell somebody takes really good care of this. Mm -hmm. It's just like immaculate. And there's all these beautiful little finishing touches on it. It's, it's like really, you can tear up, it's so pretty. Mm -hmm. You know, like they really are loved here. And they have those beautiful tiles with the actual picture of the person. It's so crazy. All right, so the going is very tough here because the trail is nothing but prickly bushes all along. And it's just like ankle killers. And in fact, Oso is kind of losing it. I think I might have to carry him. <sighs> Gotta get to the abandoned castle. Ow, oh man. Well, just like walking through razors. Yeah, oh, there's a fair amount of pain involved. You doing okay back there, buddy? You can't stop because there are ants also. I just got nailed twice and I'm trying to protect the baby's legs. What do you think, Oso? You think this is gonna be worth it? Okay, I can now see the tower, but the bushes are getting even worse. Like it's just dense bush with a narrow, narrow little trail. My ankles are just gonna get bloody after this. There's just no getting around it. Like you're gonna get all cut up. Oh, oh the trail kind of opens up here. Okay, sounds like Desiree's ducking out and Oso and I are gonna get to the ruins solo. <sighs> yeah, would have been a good day for pants. This is totally nuts. This is so awesome. I don't think I've ever seen such a cool building 100% abandoned. It's not even a little bit used or reclaimed or anything. Holy sh Okay, things are definitely getting a little creepy now. What do you think, Oso? Are we gonna get murdered? Wow, so this must have been the basement. The floors are definitely not something I'll be standing on. <laughs> yeah, this must have been used as like a cellar, you know? Like it's very insulated. Imagine how hard it must be to build a structure like this with all these irregularly shaped stones and they like come down in an arch. I wonder if there's still people alive today that like know how to do that. I mean, I imagine they had some sort of a wooden structure on the inside that they would remove afterwards, but still, I feel like something that isn't really done anymore. Let's see where else we can get to here. There's some more of those stone arches. Dang, look at that. That is so cool. I can see the boat way down there. <laughs> you having fun up there, buddy? Oh, so why don't you get your ass down? <laughs> oh, so <laughs> you're gonna kill me, dude. Okay, well, this place is amazing, but I gotta get back. Desiree and the baby are waiting for me. Okay, bud, we made it. Good job. I was wondering where you guys went. <laughs> <laughs> it was so cool. Yeah? Like, so, so cool. How are your legs? My legs are so messed up. <laughs> yeah, I was just looking at mine. I've got scratches all over. That one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one. Yeah. After a while, yeah. I was oh just gosh, like, screw it. Oh my gosh, look at this side. Let me screw see. It. That's crazy, bud. I got, it's like you were attacked by something. I got blood everywhere. Oh my gosh. Giant open scratches all <laughs> over my leg. The struggle is real, baby. All right, well, let's go to town and get some food. Mm -hmm. The ladies are hungry. What do you think, lady? You want to go get some lunch? Yeah, this is a nice spot, man. One of the things I'll always remember Greece for yeah. is restaurant tables 
literally on the water. And I love the pebble beaches here too. They're so pretty to look at. So would you say Peloponnese, yes? I would definitely say Peloponnese, yes. Okay, you going in, buddy? Yeah, I need to cool off while we're waiting. Yeah. Is the beach is wet? Yes, yeah. Yes, yeah. That feels good.